One Man, Two Governors is a play based on an old Commedia dell'arte play from the 1700s called Servant of Two Masters. The fulcrum of the whole story is this character named Francis who is strapped for cash. I play a character named Francis Henschel and he is the one man that is serving two different governors. Poor Francis gets confused really easily, so he ends up getting himself into a lot of trouble uh, over the course of the play, which of course is the engine of the comedy. So he starts with good intentions, causes a problem that causes another problem, that causes another problem that has to be solved in a hilarious way for the end. What's up, Dolly? I've no idea. Francis, what's that? Well, that's a letter for you. Why didn't you just say it was for Roscoe? I played Dolly and uh, I'm the bookkeeper for uh, Doug McKegg's character, Charlie. It's not gonna work! What, me and you? Men and women. I'm like um, Joan on Mad Men. I'm like Donna on Suits. That's a shame, because I really fancy you. Oh, thank you. I've always wanted to be a sex object. It was written by Richard Bean, and there's music written by Grant Olding, and they basically took this old 1700 play, and they set it in the 1960s in Brighton, England. And that is a little seaside town right outside of London. One Man, Two Governors is set in 1963, which is why I have a beehive and giant false lashes and the most uncomfortable underwear that you can imagine. But it looks fantastic. I can't breathe and I can only sit in this position. Uh, so I'm glad it's not 1963 anymore, but it's a great time to play in. Bloody hell, that's a fun one. Some geezer from London uh, says he's Roscoe's mander. Haddock and chip and mushy peas. That's fun. <laughs> Even though I probably wouldn't eat it. Uh, Kevin Corey's character gets to say that he doesn't have shrapnel for a pint. Um, I, I just find that, that, that I love the imagery that's attached to that. Yeah, you can say $200 cash, but it's much more fun to say I've got an envelope of bangers and mash. We're supposed to be going to Mallorca. You can't deliver Mallorca, Francis. It's 50 quid a ticket. As someone who does a lot of comedy and, and has been doing comedy for about 25 years, the thing I find exciting about it is there is actually a little bit of every kind of comedy in this play. There's, it's a classic farce. There's lots of in and, out, in and outs of doors, um, lots of slapstick happening. You get what you know! wordplay, you get physical comedy, you get situational comedy, you know, mistaken identity. It's kind of a wacky play that has many different styles happening at the same time. And there will be something that makes everybody laugh, which is kind of phenomenal. And it's not something that you generally find all in one production. There's some surprises throughout the show, also the band in between scenes, because we have this amazing scenery behind us. And when a scene ends, the curtain will drop, the band comes out and they'll play some kind of fantastic song. She's a first class kind of woman. We have these four fantastic musicians who are adorable. She's the girl one of the best. Don't tell them I have crushes on all of them because I love musicians. She's got customers on end and you drive her around the bend when she runs this fire and up on the bar. They're called the Craze. And um, between scenes, they come out on stage, they play music, and various cast members will come out and do little show-off pieces as well. So you, um, you really get a, a buffet of entertainment in One Man, Two Governors. Um, more than your average play, I would say. You get to see a whole bunch of everything that is entertaining. All those